Among the inhabitants of the Origin system, few are as puzzling as the myriad Cephalon AI programs that exist. Synthetic projections of light and logic at their core, yet possessing unnervingly human qualities and semblances of personality. Some can be called friend, while many others have intentions that are less clear. But one thing is certain, their relation to knowledge and information. These are the Cephalons. Not much is said about the Cephalons in-game, and our exposure to them is somewhat limited outside of the three main ones we speak to. However, an additional Cephalon that exists in lore outside the game may give us the most insight into these mysterious constructs, Cephalon Cordelon. Cephalon Cordelon exists as the main archivist and data manager for the Lotus, and is more than forthcoming with us regarding information about the system as a whole. Through the interactions Cordelon has had with us, we have been provided with insight into what exactly the Cephalons are. Cephalons are at their core dedicated to completing their assigned task, whatever that task may be. Because a Cephalon is completely focused on their goal, obstacles to said goals are immediately dealt with. Outside stimuli or wasted efforts are seen as worthless, and are met with some level of contempt should they exceed acceptable limits. Because of their nature, Cephalons are not cruel, but merely cold and calculated, viewing the destruction of obstacles as a necessary step in completing their tasks. What constitutes as obstruction can be rather wide, and even a small misstep against a Cephalon may be viewed as statistically worthy of removal. A Cephalon's task may be assigned to them, or deemed worthy of pursuit by the Cephalon themselves should they lack directions such as Cimaris or Suda. These tasks can range from ship management, data archiving, or even less obvious tasks that require an artificial intelligence of some sort, such as the Cephalons used by Teshin for training in the Conclave. Cephalons are strictly logical and focused on functions that are deemed wholly necessary to their assigned job. This includes their outside composure and what we see as their personalities. Though they may seem extremely genuine and unique, they only exist because the Cephalon displaying them sees them as the proper form of interaction with its usual guests, given its assigned position. For example, the training Cephalons used by Teshin may utilize a rude and belittling personality in an attempt to strengthen Ateno's mind and training, while additionally providing information relevant to the assigned Conclave trial if need be. Another example would be Ortis's jovial and joking attitude, which is the realization of his goal to provide ease of mind, in this case through comedy, to the operator, though how effective this may be is debatable. This ties into a Cephalon's desire to expand beyond its assigned sphere. Should they find themselves able to sustain their assigned task adequately, they may pursue outside interests that they find supplemental to their primary task. For example, in the case of Samaris, he may take an interest in cataloging the information of a subject's death, should he have ample information on their life. A Cephalon's form is not absolute. In fact, not all Cephalons have a physical form at all. Many utilize light projection technology if it is available, but again, they will only utilize this technology if they are assigned a task that requires such visual representation to begin with. It is very possible that we have encountered many Cephalons in our travels, but their assigned position makes their need for visual or auditory representation non-existent, and thus they go unnoticed. Cephalons choose a form that offers some form of inspiration to them. Geometric shapes are commonly utilized due to their purity of form and humble simplicity, though it is not mandatory. In Ortis's case, his cracked visual representation may serve as an acknowledgement of his fractured mind, and serve as a reminder of his duty to the operator. As I said earlier, Cephalons lack physical form, and are thus not harmable by conventional means. It is likely that in instances where they do appear physical, such as in the Conclaves, they are utilizing some base physical object to tether their movements to, or they simply move their projection manually in a fashion that physics would dictate. In regards to harming a Cephalon, the only true way would be to destroy all traces of their data, but this may prove to be an extremely difficult, if not impossible, task given the very nature of a Cephalon as a non-physical entity. Additionally, Cephalons are not so simple as to idly allow threats to their existence. Security systems could be utilized should they have access to them, and should a Cephalon in control of life support find the need to defend itself, the results could be disastrous. It is uncertain how long ago Cephalons were created, but they were in existence during the Old War at least, and possibly before that, as Ortis is referred to as a Series 2 Cephalon, and his fragmented memories seem to be focused on the Old War period. Whether or not Cephalons were used only by Tenno or Tenno-focused individuals like Teshin is uncertain, but it would make sense that there would be Cephalons employed for other purposes during the Orican era as well, likely in a similar capacity to their modern counterparts. Today, Cephalon production still exists, and they are at the very least employed by Corpus in addition to the Tenno, with Darvo indicating that ship Cephalons are a common staple in many ships in the system. Wow, you may want to get a new ship Cephalon when you can afford it. 
<laughs> that one seems glitched. With the Corpus and their focus on efficient business, a Cephalon may be a valuable addition to their systems. As for the Grenier, it is unlikely that they would utilize such beings, as they lack corporeal form to subdue and may pose the risk of uncontrollable growth should they be left unchecked. With the incredible amount of soldiers the Grenier create, it is likely that these tasks are simply assigned to clones with varying levels of intelligence. But, as with many things in the Warframe universe, these are mostly uncertain, and should in no way be taken as the only interpretation. But, until the time comes when we have all the facts, this is what we know.